To make it even more challenging, the clock up here is flashing random numbers. So the speaker has no idea how much time is left. Oh, they're upside down. <laughs> Theo says it's upside down. So uh, I don't know, you know, it's early in the morning. I don't know if you guys are digesting what Andrew just showed. To me, that is really cool. Not only was the UI really nice, but I've never seen anything like that that will tell me, that first of all will separate um, uh, parse time from execute time from download time and tell me what are the dependencies that's uh, blocking things. So I think that's going to be very cool. And Andrew, did you? Oh, there you are. So, no, where's Andrew? Oh, he's back there. So is, is that available now or not yet? Track Andrew down and, and don't let him get away with a commitment like soon. <laughs> We're launching that soon. All right. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of mobile lately. And one of the things I think people, it's getting more and more uh, recognition is winery. But I don't think people really realize it. It's really cool because it works on all, all mobile devices. And so I find it really helpful. And I was ecstatic to uh, be able to get Patrick Mueller, the creator of Winery from IBM, here today to give us a quick demo of that. Please help me welcome Patrick. Good morning. Is the mic on? So uh, yeah, I uh, work on an open source project uh, at IBM in the US called Winery. Winery stands for uh, Web Inspector Remote. Uh, the Web Inspector bit is because I reuse WebKit's Web Inspector debugger user interface. And so the, the tool presents itself to the user using the hopefully familiar uh, Web Inspector debugger uh, UI, which is shipped in both Chrome as Chrome DevTools and Safari as Web Inspector. And then the remote bit is that you're operating the debugger on, say, your laptop or desktop, but, but you're debugging or inspecting a, uh, a browser running on a remote device. And in particular, I've been focusing on mobile, so phones, iPads, etc. Uh, it's part of the PhoneGap project, which is actually now part of the Apache call callback project, or I think we're going to come up with yet another name in a week or two. And uh, rather than give you a URL, just go to Google, and there's plenty of resources on it. OK, so let's get started on a little demo here. If I can find all the pieces and make them fit. Uh-oh, there's my simulator window. It's gone. Hmm. How can I move that? Let me quit it and uh, restart it. Maybe it'll show up here. Uh, I don't. Uh, it's easiest to show this running in a uh, iOS simulator because it'll run on on one screen. But this will actually run on a real phone um, or in, in simulators, as I'm, as I'm showing. So here's the user interface. And I'm going to have to squeeze that in so you can see both running at the same time. There we go. Let me launch a browser here. Kind of small, but you'll get, get an idea of what's going on anyway. So. I believe I'm connected now because it's showing something in green right here. Green is good. It means you're connected. Um, again, this is our user interface here of the debugger. And, and this is the thing that we're debugging. So I can click on, uh, just like real Web Inspector, it has a number of panels. We don't support all the panels Web Inspector uh, supports, but we do support uh, quite a few. So the first one is elements. This is showing your, your DOM elements here. And you can see that as you hover over elements, it's showing you the, the uh, highlights to see the border margin padding, uh, that kind of thing. I can click on an element here and see things like the CSS properties. Um, I can disable them. So if I turn the, the green off on the H1 
uh, CSS rule that'll uh, go back to the default of green. I can, I can do that for all of those. You can delete elements wholesale, and it's just gone. You can do some amount of editing here. So if I edit the actual text, that's modifying that. Um, if you want to see the computed styles and not just the style rules that, that matched, you can see those, and that's showing you all of the, the non-default CSS properties. Or if you're dying to see everything, including all those groovy dash WebKit properties, uh, you can see them all here. There's some, a few other things here. We got the metrics rectangle, so you can actually see the numeric values uh, of, of the relevant things. There's properties on the elements themselves. So uh, headings don't have, of course, all that much uh, great stuff, but you can see things like inner text, and, and these, are, these are editable as well. And I think that's it for the elements panel. Let's go to the, the resources panel. The resources panel is showing you databases and local storage. So we're seeing uh, some keys and values here uh, just from the, the local storage. There's some databases here. If I, if I actually start this little web page, it's going to touch a database here, Web SQL database, and we can see some things in it. So there's a Clicks DB database with a Clicks table, and uh, we can see the entries in there. Uh, if you just click on the database itself, you can uh, type arbitrary SQL. Uh, so I think uh, what was well, I, I'll just use. Uh, star and clicks, and it'll show you a little inline table. That's the exact same thing we saw before. Some of this stuff is editable as well, um, so you can edit while you're uh, debugging it. That's it for the resources panel. The, the network panel is a new one in the latest release of Winery, which I put out last week or so, and it's showing you XHRs. So uh, what, when I had clicked that button, three XHRs happened, and I can uh, click on a particular XHR. It'll show me the, the content that actually came over the wire as well as, uh, so, oh, that's really terribly formatted. <laughs> um, show you some of the, uh, the headers uh, from the HTTP request. Um, okay, and then there's a timeline facility which will show you some events as they're happening live on a timeline. Actually, there was a timeline on this network panel that we, I'm not sure you, oh, there we go. So you can kind of see your XHRs as they happen, and they're showing you a few time values uh, in there as well. There's a more general timeline available here. You have to enable it by clicking that red button. I just clicked at the bottom, and we're going to click our Start Stuff button again, and then stop it. And then you'll see the timeline fills up with a bunch of events that are occurring. These are just timers, and then there's a way to do user, uh, user timeline events as well using the console object. Um, and you can hover over these, and some of these are uh, disclosable to provide additional information. Uh, show you, in this particular case, like the timer showing you a stack of, of when the timer was set and, and stuff like that. And then lastly, the uh, one that I think gets most use, if I can get this to dismiss, yikes, okay, there we go, is uh, the console. So this is a JavaScript uh, console, which is both showing you console.log messages, and it's a REPL, so you can just type uh, JavaScript in here. So if I, uh, you know, I can just hit document, and it's going to show me the uh, HTML document in line there. But then I can uh, actually execute things as well. So I say document dot body dot style dot let's see background color didn't auto scroll as uh, no no color set for the the background color of the body, but I'll change that to a horrifying pink, and then you see it it changed that live, and, and then you can of course. Uh, remove that. Um, and I think that's, I think that's it for the, uh, for the live demo. Again, um, this is uh, open source. Uh, you can download it. There's also a service that Natobi runs at debug.phonegap.com. 
Uh, it requires you to run a server on a machine to, uh, to actually uh, get the debugger to run, but there's an online server, public access server that you can use as well. I'll be here uh, both days, so definitely uh, hit me up if you have any questions.